Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 6 of this NHL 24 Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode here on my channel. Today we're going to be getting into the 2026 Stanley Cup playoffs, into the conference finals, potentially the Stanley Cup finals if things go well. But without further ado, let's get to the comments because I had a couple questions for you guys last episode, mainly based around if we should continue scouting in the upcoming years, for one, and two, if we should play the games or simulate the games. So, the first comment here um, came from Ben Parker saying, this guy's scouting is unreal, amazing series. So thanks for the support, Ben. Didn't quite answer my question, but thank you for the support. Uh, Winkletown said, Big Mac Celebrini has decided to just run over the NHL. That's hilarious. That's exactly what happened. He scored 118 points as a 20-year-old, right? Or 19? 19? Yeah, he's a 19-year-old. Um, he said, it's awesome to see a player actually become something worth having. I'd say keep scouting as normal. You're paying these people, and it's a big part of your team building. It's probably worth hunting for a 17, 18-year-old defenseman duo just to be on the safe side. Worst case scenario, you can always always trade some prospects for a more solid guy. This series has been great this far. Thank you for sharing. So yeah, thank you, Winkletown. Great feedback there as far as he's saying we shouldn't change scouting at all. Interesting comment as far as we should be looking to upgrade the defense even more. I honestly thought our defense did pretty good this season, but if you guys think we should upgrade even more so on the defensive end, then let me know. On And, and again, like we have quite a few decent prospects coming up the pipeline for defense too. If we take a look in the system and just see what's there, like we have Henry Muse is going to be a great top four defenseman. Um, he just needs a little more time. Same thing with Quinton Stamkos. And then we also have, you know, Stewart and Gore here who there's potential there for sure. It's just going to be a matter of if they develop properly or not. Apparently Henry Muse, okay, no, Henry Muse had a pretty solid season. He did did pretty good there in Ottawa, so that's good to see. And then, of course, like in the <laughs> in the main system, we have a top four defensive group already, in my opinion, that is ready to go. Like Korchinski, Vlasic, and then Levshinov, Brooks, like or or vice versa. As far as Korchinski plays with Brooks, Vlasic plays with Levshinov, that is a solid top four already, and it's going to stay that way for the future, in my opinion. I don't think that we're going to need to change it much. Uh, we got Drew Camesso on a crazy like $1.95 million deal for the next like eight seasons. So we're locked in in goal. And then of course we have two more really good goalies coming up the system and Backer and Vinny. So we'll just, it's going to be a battle for goaltending. Absolutely. Um, the, the right wing is looking okay. Probably could use a little bit more work. Like that is an area where we could maybe look to pick up one guy. Then again, we have Parashek and Jekko down in the system. So those guys will slot into our team eventually. As far as left wingers go, um, Reesonen's actually made some leaps and bounds as far as development has gone this year. He's done really well. So he is a potential option for the future. And then we have just Blake and Doc. But then again, you have to remember that we're also going to probably have Celebrini and Reichel or Celebrini and Kurashev or like there's going to be combinations for how we can play the lineup. So and then center, we are probably the deepest team in the league right now. As far as just how many centers we have, we have Matty Luomala coming up the team too, who looks really good. And then we got a couple other um, elite guys there that might make the might make the jump. But you know, I rambled a little bit, but that's just kind of where our team's at right now. So I don't see huge needs for improvement really. Um, wherever our picks land, it's going to be fine. We're going to manage. But the next comment came from Max Williams saying, "I think you should do auto scouting after this year because I think if you want to make it more interesting by having ups and downs in a longer franchise series, then do auto scouting." So that's a great comment for feedback as well. Caleb Taylor said, "For scouting, I trimmed it down to about 200 prospects, and I scout less in Europe, which makes those European prospects more of a risk." So also awesome comment for realism too. So maybe what we do is we turn on auto scouting, we don't really like what's the word don't do a lot of scouting but we can jump in when there there's like north american prospects where we're like oh we want a little more detail on this guy we'll actually go in and like manually scout a couple players here and there kind of do it like i don't know if you guys watch i think it's sin sin for the win productions i think he does it kind of that way with his scouting in his series so that would be a fun way to do it, I think. It would keep it more engaging for myself and hopefully for you guys too, even though the scouting wouldn't be just like perfect across the board like it currently is. 
I think it would definitely add to the kind of realism as far as having up and down drafts. We've had some crazy up drafts the last like two, three seasons. This year it's going to be pretty good too, even though it's a bit of a weaker draft class in my opinion. Uh, Max Williams also said, I think it would be a great idea to start commentating game sevens and winning or losing opportunity games in the postseason. I just confirmed with him and he's just saying that whether, even if it's not do or die, or even if it's not game seven, to comment do or die games as far as like a game five, we'd comment if we were down 3-1 or something. Or if we're up 3-1, we're looking to close up the series, we'd commentate that too. So yeah, um, I think that's what we're going to do. And final comment came from That's GSB saying, after about my third draft, I just throw it on auto scout or amateur or auto scout for amateur. So yeah, that, it seems like the trend is auto scout more so. I know we're paying the scouts good money, but at the same time, it's really more so just a matter of, okay, we want some realism factors here. We don't necessarily want our team to just be completely loaded for the entire rest of the series. You know, maybe we'll catch a couple draft steals here and there with auto scouting on, but it won't be like every single draft we're landing more steals necessarily, because again, that's not realistic either. So yeah, with that all in mind, let's jump into this. I am really, really excited to get going on this San Jose series. Of course, we did get all the scouting done for this upcoming draft. Honestly, this is a bit of a weaker upcoming draft here. I don't think it's going to be super, super solid. Um, but there are still a couple kind of question marks I've got. Holy, my Xbox is lagging today. I think I'm going to have to go close some other apps or other games. But yeah, looking through here, like there's not really a lot of steals and stuff necessarily. There's a bunch of goalies, and I, I'm not super not super feeling the need to go and chase after a bunch of goalies. I think our team's in a pretty decent spot right now for goaltending and that it's going to stay that way for the future. So yeah, you can see there are some, some decent prospects in there. Not a whole lot. We're going to have like opportunities to pick up necessarily, but with that in mind, I, th I think we still have a fairly decent draft ahead of us here, regardless of if we manage to snag a whole bunch of draft steals or not. So yeah, that's what we're looking at right now. And I, I honestly think it will be a decent draft still. It just won't be over the top franchise and elite players left and right necessarily. So, all right, let's get to this. I am super excited for the San Jose series. I wanna see how good the Sharks actually are. I believe the reason they're so good is because of goaltending. I can't remember, but we checked last episode. And yeah, like th this team doesn't look overwhelming on the offensive and they look good. Like, they do look good on the offensive end. I can't deny that at all. I can't believe William Eklund's hit a high elite status. Like, if anything, you'd think Will Smith would probably be there. But on defense, they're questionable. And then, yeah, I think it is. Yeah, exactly. They just have Igor Shesterkin in net. So that kind of makes sense as to why they have such a good record in the playoffs and why they've won so many series. Like, they're, they're in the conference finals. And when I looked at, like, when I initially looked at the Sharks, I'm like, Sharks and Hawks, that's not what I would expect for the 2026 postseason at all for the conference finals. But that is the case, and they, they steamrolled the Oilers 4-1. So, really, there are there's opportunity for us to lose this series. But then again, we've also got Montreal and Washington as the other two remaining teams here. So let's just go take a peek at them. Because, again, we if we win this series, we're moving on to play one of those guys. As far as the Montreal lineup goes, looks like the... What's going on here? Did they trade away Slavkovsky? I think they did. Oh, no, he's right there. Never mind. Okay, so they, they've got Slavkovsky down on the bottom wing. They're, they're not, again, not an overwhelming offensive team. They've got... Ooh, they picked up Adam Boakfast. Okay, that's an interesting player to have. I mean, again, ex-Chicago Blackhawks, so maybe that'll make things more interesting. Of course, they've got Lane Hudson there, too. And then in goal, they got Jeremy Swayman. Okay, so honestly, Montreal looks pretty solid defensively. I think that's kind of their strong suit. As far as Washington goes, Ovi's still a beast at 40 years old. How many points does he score? <laughs> He's been pretty solid. Wow. Um, yeah, and I Wait, did he break the goal record? I assume he did. Yeah, he's at 967, so he's is it 960? Yeah, 894 is the goal record. I was like, why is 984 in my head right now? It's not right. But again, like another team that's kind of just mediocre apart from the goaltending. So 
really, we have the worst goaltending going in here, which is hilarious because I have no doubts about our goaltending. It's really more so just a matter of, is our offense going to be good enough to beat their goaltending? So, without further ado, let's get to this San Jose series. San Jose Chicago 2026 Western Conference Finals Game 1 starts off 3 to 1 Chicago as Entwistle, Reichel, and Radish all score. Phillips Zidino gets the goal for San Jose. We outshoot them essentially 2 to 1 on the ratio there, or exactly 2 to 1 after the first period. All right. Second period, they get back in it as Travis Dermott gets a goal, but as we head into the third, again, we're fairly heavily out shooting them. Patty Kane scores on the power play, but then Logan Couture responds right back, so we are in a one-shot game here with the uh, with the Sharks sorry, in game one. I don't know why I almost said the Blackhawks. So, power play Chicago does not score, and there we go. Philip Kurashev gets the goal on Shesterkin, so we're doing just fine. 5-3 game. We controlled this game pretty much the whole time. It got close a couple times, but really, Chicago is just a dominant force right now. Macklin Celebrini is on a whole nother level. Three assists in that game, too. Like he, He's got 23 points in just 11 games. He just controls and manipulates the game to his will. So, fabulous first game there from the Hawks. And as we head into game two, we start off down one nothing as Philip Zadina gets the goal. We outshoot him by three shots, though. Second period, make it a 1-1 game as Reichel gets us on the board. And as we head into the third period, Phil or Fabian Zetterlund's going to get San Jose on the board first. So it is a 2-1 game. Power play San Jose does convert as Philip Zadina gets the goal there. They get another power play. Oh my goodness, they've just been on the power play for the whole third period. So kind of shot ourselves in the foot there with whoever took whatever penalty it was. We were just in the box for that entire period. So yeah, couldn't really build momentum there. Kind of makes sense, honestly, but how, like, what was the penalty? He got a major for slashing. Um, okay, that is, that might be the first major slashing penalty I've seen in a while. He either slashed a guy in the head or he slashed him, like, very blatantly after the play two hand kind of thing. So, um, all right, 1-1 one, one series after Corey Brooks kind of downs our Blackhawks on the run that we've been on, but that's okay. As we head back to the Shark Tank at the SAP Arena or SAP Center in San Jose. So, game three, first period. Oh my goodness, the Hawks erupt for four goals. I would assume that was chasing Shesterkin from the net. We only had 11 shots, so wow, what a first period. And we get outshot it, but it doesn't matter. Second period, make it 5 0 as Patty Kane scores again. And as we head into the third period, this is just been a dominant effort here from Chicago on away ice like that five goals in the playoffs is hard to do it's hard to score that much but the fact that we were able to do it with such ease in the first period in a bit is crazy but Dard scores on the power play make it six another Chicago power play that one doesn't convert but wow okay what a performance what a bounce back here from Chicago as again we've just really controlled the series overall game two is a bit of a an anomaly for us. 971 save percentage for Drew Camesso. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this uh, this Hawks team is just cruising right now. As we have scored, oh, we scored five, six, and one. So we scored 12 goals in three games, averaging four goals a game. That's very solid. So let's continue on here. Celebrini's got 25 points in just 13 games. He's almost two points per game in the playoffs. All right, game number four. We could potentially go up 3 1 here. We start off down 2-1 as Amadio and Duchesne score, and then Reichel gets us back with them. One, we outshoot them, but we got to score more. All right, second period. Make it a 2-2 game as Celebrini is able to beat Shesterkin. As we head into the third period, we just continue to pepper Shesterkin with shots here. Power play for San Jose. That one doesn't convert. Power play for Chicago does convert as RTM Levshinov scores, and then Connor Bedard scores right after I think that must have been a major penalty again because we were on the power play for a while there. And that really is going to decide game number four here as Korchinski also scores, but it went from 2-2 to 5-2 in this third period and we just took control of the game. How many shots we have? 53 shots. Holy Chicago. This team's offense is just on another level already. I can't believe how... Like, they're firing on all cylinders possible. I just... I'm... I'm shocked. I mean, they got 79 locker room chemistry, too, which is also some of the highest morale in chemistry I've seen. 
So the fact that that's the case, like look at everybody's rolling on green here right now, pretty much. Like there's maybe what, three or four, three to five players that are like not top of their game right now essentially. And then there's one disgruntled guy in Essa Lindell because, again, he was just part of a contract move, I believe, um, in one of our trades. i got to go look and see where we even picked Lindell up from. And we got Lindell in the... Oh, no, we just signed Lindell and then decided, oh, well, let's play our rookie defenseman instead in Levshinov. And that turned out pretty well. So uh, with a 3-1 series lead here, we look to knock the Sharks out in five. The Canadians are down three to one against the Capitals as well. So let's get into it here. And first period, 1-1 game as Tomas Hertel and then Patrick Kane both score. Second period, make it a 2-2 game and we get to jump into a fun playing scenario here, which is exactly what I like. I would much rather be playing in a competitive game of NHL rather than being up 3-1, down 3-1, something like that. So yeah, I think we are ready to go here. Um, Shesterkin's obviously San Jose's best player. We've got a Connor Bedard though, and as you can see here, actually you can't quite see, we got 99 offense, 86 defense, 87 goaltending. It's not, our goaltending is not as good as theirs, but I don't think that's really going to matter too much here. So I just want to make sure the volume's not too loud once we jump in. I also might have an announcer on. I'm not certain about that, but uh, let's see how we do. Yep, we definitely have an announcer on. Okay, Gene Sabolski, shut up because you're not a very good announcer. All right, so here we go. Game five at the United Center, 2-2 heading into the third period. Will Chicago head to the Stanley Cup Finals tonight, or will they be forcing a, or will San Jose be forcing a game six here? So we're going to run some point pressure in possession. Radish holding onto the puck very well, and we draw a slashing penalty just like that. So... Honestly, we did nothing there besides pass the puck around, and we're going to go on the power play for it, so you got to love that. Um, but yeah, let's see what our team can do here. So, playoff points, it's not really close, but Dart and Celebrini are just dominating. Cole Caulfield's been really good for Montreal, but at the same time, that's a whole different series. So, Connor Bedard going to play it back to Vlasic. Patty Kinane going to snap one through. Good chance there, but... Uh, just didn't quite go. All right, we're going to get full pressure. Levshinov going to wheel it in. Tries to go back door to Bedard, and they're going to get the actual clear here. Oh, maybe. Maybe not. And good poke check there by Vlasic. Now Patty Kane going to play it in deep. Looking across. That pass did not go where I wanted it to, and Vlasic's going to have to skate here. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. That was off the post. Yeah, that was a really great chance. I don't know how they didn't score there. Oh, leftchenau has got a lane. Two on one. Patty Kane, what a save. What an absolutely fabulous save there by Igor Shesterkin. Should have been a 3-2 to two game just like that. But Celebrini's going to wheel here. He's got some open ice, and he's going to cut in. Celebrini throws it low. Almost got it through the five hole there, but a, a good save there by Shesterkin. We'll get the second unit set up here because, uh, yeah, Celebrini just it hasn't quite gotten it going yet here. So, all right, we got Kurashev, Blake, Reichel, and one more. Robin's looking for the clear. He's going to get a good flick on that one. Wow, that was that was something. All right, so here goes Philip Kurashev. He's just going to walk right in, essentially. Tried to hit the drop pass to Blake, and they were just puppy guarding him. Okay, that was... That was an interesting hold. All right, so hopefully the game volume isn't too loud for you guys. I'm trying to adjust it properly for that. But there's a good poke. Okay, with 35 seconds left, I don't think we're really getting too much out of this power play here. Now Korchinski, gonna look up ice. He's gonna find Cody Blake. 
Blake gonna cut back to Reichel? What what are you doing? Alright, wow, this this just makes no sense. Okay. Alright, let's see if Korchinski can just wheel this thing. Oh yeah, he's gone. Korchinski's in. Kevin Korchinski can't quite cut it back. Oh, and we tried the drop pass to Kurdishev, it just didn't quite go. Now here goes Radish. He's gonna tee one up and just fire it on, but uh, that didn't really do much. Oh, now a nice pass over to Bordalo. Oh, there's a big hit. Now Radish trying to play some defense. Let's get that cleared out of there. Oh, beautiful pass up to Blake. Ah, oh, Cody Blake just couldn't quite get through there. If he did, I think it would have been a goal. Uh-oh. Oh, good stick by Korchinski. Wow, that was fabulous. Alright, we're gonna kick this thing around over to Nazer. Nazer just gonna get stuck on his own teammate. You love to see that. Kershev plays it around to Entwistle. Big hit there by Vlasic. Now Tanev pretty much gets beat. Oh, goodness, what a save by Camesso. That's a great glove save. Oh, Tanev gets by. Chris Tanev trying to set it up. Can't quite get through with the pass, unfortunately. Oh, no. And we are going to be going on the PK here as Frank Nazer took the feet out off of, um, I believe it was Victor. Or, sorry, not Victor, William Eklund. Okay. All right, so that really wasn't too great there. Um, you know, it happens, but... So, we have a penalty to kill here with about 11 minutes left in the third period, but... Albalin's going to go for a dump and chase, and he's got the faster legs. What a goal, Par Albalin. Oh, my goodness. What a fabulous play. Chip and chase, and he's just the fastest player on the ice, apparently. Par Albalin finds a short-handed goal. Not what I was expecting, but uh, we will take it as he just uses his wheels and just beats Shesterkin with a gorgeous forehand backhand deke there. And tucks it. Yeah, wow, that is what we like to see. Whew. There you go. Par Elblin's got three goals in the playoffs now. It's obviously not 12 like Patty Kane, but uh, we will take it. All right, so that face-off is not going to get won by Celebrini. Oh, I missed a big hit. That probably should have been a goal. All right, and they're going to look for a shot. Oh, great stick there by Celebrini. He's going to get Elbowin in stride. Par Elbowin going to fire again. Great chance. Oh, he almost buried two shorthanded goals in one shift. Oh, my God. What a hit. Corey Brooks just threw a devastating hit there. All right, now here comes Elbowin. He's going to walk in and fire again. Another good shot. Just didn't quite work. Oh, fabulous chance for Duchesne. Oh no, we're gonna get another penalty here. Come on, man. Oh, we're really shooting ourselves in the foot here with these penalties. We gotta be more disciplined. And this time it's our best defensive defenseman, in my opinion, in Corey Brooks taking the penalties so we've got 52 seconds of five on three to kill which is not ideal but I think we can do it Ooh, fabulous save there by Camesso Korchinski's just gonna fire this thing down right in on net you love to see that good stick by Reichel there Korchinski, great stick yet again. That's what we love, defensive plays like that. That is fabulous. And 
Gorchinski will get this down to finish off this 5-on-3 here real quick. Great penalty killing here by the Hawks. Okay, decent chance, but we will take it. How did how does that not hurt? Does that not hurt? Hello? Really? Does that not hurt? A slap shot clean off the leg? No? Jeff Carter gonna fire it in. Cause Shusterkin to play it. Alright. Okay, so we got a total of what? Oh, Tanev got beat. Yep. Oh, no goal. No way. Yeah. No, Comesso got absolutely ran over on that play. No chance that he's... Yeah, that's... Well, it's either a kicking motion or it's goalie interference. Regardless, it's not going to be a goal. Like, just no chance. Yeah, Smith and Eklund are a great pairing to have in on a break, but... Yeah, no chance. No chance. All right, 3-2 game. And we're going to lose the face-off. Farhar's just going to dump it in. Okay. Very intelligent play on the power play. All right. Not. All right, we'll get the tie-up on McCabe. That's what we like. Am I getting a pet? I'm getting an interference penalty for whatever the hell that was? Really? Really? Another five on three? It's only for 10 seconds, but still. Come on, man. Like, what are we doing? A time it's Elbelin for interference? Like, where was the interference on that play? That he skated into a guy by accident? Like, come on now. There's accidental interference, then there's actual interference. Good stick. Alright, Levshinov, good stick. Why is Patty Kane on a PK? Oh, what a pass. What a pass. Levshinov, great chance. Wow, that was that was really something. <laughs> Korchinski with the big old glove grab. Sets up the 2-1-2, two -two, essentially. Oh my god, what a save. Oh, no, that's not the play. That's not the play. Get it out. Get it out. Why did I play that? Alright, well, we'll get our other unit out there, which is perfect. Because those are actual penalty killers, not all offensive players. Alright, Corey Brooks around to Vlasic. Alex Vlasic's going to hunt this thing down here, apparently. Everlay's going to get tied up. Beautiful. Okay, no, we didn't quite get it. Okay. Oh, boy. What was that hit by Brooks? That was not what we wanted. Oh, my goodness. What a save, Camesso. Drew Camesso just made one of the most ridiculous saves I think I've seen all year. That's insane. Like, he wasn't properly flopping, but yeah, wow, that was, that should have been a goal. It should be a 3-3 game right now, in my opinion. All right, Jeff Carter up to Celebrini. Celebrini's just going to truck right around a guy or two, and that that should have been a goal as well. That's a fabulous save by Shesterkin. Shesterkin gets the uh, <sighs> shaft of his goalie stick on that one. That was a crazy save, but... Uh, yeah, wow. All right, McCabe coming in. Oh my goodness, Jake McCabe, what a play. I can't believe he uh, drove that. I wasn't ready for him to drive it right to the net. <coughs> okay, so just eight seconds left on this PK. And... Levshinov's going to look up ice, send it to Patty Kane, who missed it somehow. Okay. Oh my goodness, fabulous save yet again by Camesso there. Holy San Jose, play it a little tighter here, eh? 
Grishev cutting back and a fire rebound. Oh, Carter could have had the game right there. He probably could have ended it. Oh, good stick Levshinov. Two on one, two on oh. Vidard, oh, you gotta be kidding me, Jeff Carter. That's a two on O, and you're gonna just skate away from it, really? For a change? Like, really? Oh, what a block. Jeff Carter putting his body on the line. Love to see that, especially from an older guy, too. Oi, oi, oi. That was a great chance. Martinez, oh my god, Camesso, what a save, yet again, yeah, standing ovation for Drew Camesso right now, wow, like, I don't know how he stopped that one, but we will take the saves where we can get them, Drew Camesso is making a case to be our starting goalie for the long-term future as well, the way he's playing right now, like, my god, <laughs> Chris Tanev looking for a lane. I'm gonna send this one up to Patty Kane. Patty Kane gonna drop pass back to Tanev. He's gonna lock it in and fire. Not enough traffic in front. Classic. Very good little stick check there. Man, Will Smith just like glided right past that guy there. What was the penalty for? We we took another penalty without me doing anything. Slashing, hey? On Lucas Reichel? For what? I didn't see a slash anywhere in the vicinity of that play. That must have been so far behind. The, can we see replay? You've got to be kidding me. It's a net front battle. Of course there's going to be a slash here and there. That's how net front battles work. <laughs> All right, well, we're taking it right down to the wire here. Oh, my God. Alex Vlasic, you did not just do that. Are you serious right now? So we've got a six on four to deal with here, and... Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, great tie-up. Fabulous tie-up. Oh, God. Not so fabulous. Clear, though. Camesso again. What a play. Get it out here. Oh, God. Slow defenders. What a save again, Camesso. Oh, my goodness. Drew Camesso single-handedly just won us that game. Maybe not the whole series, but that game, for sure. He outperformed Igor Shosturkin. If that doesn't say something, I don't know what does. Wow. Holy wow. What a series. What a game five from Camesso. As we... We've glided to the semifinals. We have had no more than five games in a series so far. We are fresh. We are rolling. Captain Connor Bedard is looking great, and uh, he's here to accept the Consmith, or sorry, not the Consmith, the Clarence Campbell. Um, if anything, Celebrini is going to have the best shot at the Consmith at the moment. But alrighty, wow, what a uh, what a series, what a game five from Drew Camasso. Just that could have been eight three the other way for San Jose with the amount of chances we had. But Par Elbelin gets the series winning goal. And we move on, getting outshot in that game. But man, oh man, what a performance it was. The other thing I did notice too, is that Par Elbelin is currently wearing number 16 and that he probably should be wearing number 14. I just don't know if 14's available. It is. So for whatever reason, Par Elblin wasn't wearing his preferred number because the ANHL. But wow, just wow, Camasso. I got no other words. That was fabulous. That was a stand on your head, tip of the cap performance. Montreal wins game five. So that series goes to another game at least. And 
Is that the case? It is indeed. Um, our Rockford Ice Hogs did not make it. I don't know if they even... They didn't even make the playoffs. I don't think they did. Yeah, they were bad. Never mind. I'm thinking of the Laval Rocket in our other series with Montreal. So, are the playoffs over yet? Nope, Montreal's forced to Game 7. All right, as they win 3-2. And what's the result going to be? Washington wins 4-1 in Game 7. So we will indeed get the Washington Capitals and Linus Olmark. So that'll be a fun one because Linus Olmark, I think, is their best player. I might be wrong there. Oh, no, Ovi's 90 rated. So, so yeah, it's Ovi and the Caps, but Olmark's right there, man. He is 89 rated, looks absolutely phenomenal, has, like, fully loaded X-Factors. Yeah, he, he looks good, so... All right, we're going to have, a, again, another tough-tasked team here to try and beat. But then again, Chicago's been rolling this this entire playoffs. Like, Celebrini's got more assists than games played. Never mind points, but here we go. We are back in the Stanley Cup Finals with the Chicago Blackhawks in just year three. I Again, I, I have no words for how this has happened, but okay. So, game one. We start off down 3-1 as Tom Wilson... Scores two, and Alexi Protas scores one. Celebrini gets our goal. We outshoot him 15-9 in the first period. Second period, make it a 3-3 game as Carter and Alblin get us back on the board. And as we head into the third, we give a power play, but they don't score. And we continue on here as the shots are fairly tight now. Um, we were out shooting them heavily. We get a power play. Doesn't go, unfortunately. So that does happen from time to time. As we continue on here, back and forth a little bit more on the shots, but uh, yeah, game one looks like it's going to be going to overtime. So, in overtime, here we go. Power play Washington. Ovi does not score on that one. All right, that's kind of where I'd be expecting him to, but Washington does get the victory from a Kasperi Kapanen goal, out of all things. Not, you know, a Wilson hat trick or anything else. Part Elblin had two points, so very good night from him. But just a little bit, we, we come up a little bit short in overtime there as we are not able to start off the series strong at home. So as we head into game two here, we'll start off down 2-1 again. This is not the way to start the series, boys. You've got to start the games by winning the games, so, or winning the first period. So, yeah, Celebrini scores again, but again, we're down by a goal with more shots taken. So... Not a great first period again here. Second period, make it a 3-2 game as Radish gets a shorthanded goal for us, but John Carlson gets them the lead back. Power play Chicago. Come on, boys. Our power play just isn't clicking. Taylor Radish gets his second goal of the game, though, to tie the game up. Beautiful. All right, power play again, Chicago. Mackenzie Entwistle just scores even strength after we don't convert on another power play. Washington power play this time. That one doesn't convert. And all right, looks like we are going to draw another power play, not score on it again. Washington also draws a power play, but does not score either. So we win the game 4-3. to three. Uh, three point night from Taylor Radish there on the first line, essentially. And, yeah, we tied a series up 1-1, so we head to the nation's capital here for games 3 and 4. And first period of game number 3, Jeff Carter and Dylan Strome score. We outshoot them 16-9. Second period, we go up 3-1 to one as Jeff Carter and Cody Blake score for the Hawks, and now we just got to put it on Cruz and not give up any goals to the Capitals here, so... Couple power plays for the Blackhawks in a row. None of those convert. And then, of course, Alexi Protus scores. But Patrick Kane answers right back less than a minute later. And we are still up by two goals. So that's the, the good spot to be in. All right. And as we continue on a little bit further here, we're just going to hold on to that lead. Alex Vlasic gets the empty netter. And we win that game 5-2. Beautiful. All right. So we go up 2-1 to one in this series. We are two games away. Two wins away from a Stanley Cup. Not two games, but two wins. And yeah, my goodness, this uh, this Blackhawks team has just... I, I don't have words. They've just been dominating the postseason this year. First period of Game 4, we go up 3 nothing as Reichel, Radish, and Entwistle all score. I swear to God, it's our coach. Our coach has just turned this team into a powerhouse. 17-6 to on shots. Like, we dominated. And yeah, like, wow. All right, second period. Make it 4-1 to one as Celebrini and Ovechkin score. As we head into the third period, we 
might win three games in a row here. As we get a power play, don't convert, but that's all good. And as we continue on a little bit further here, still 4-1. Washington just can't seem to solve Drew Camesso as we get two more goals from Radish and then Reichel again. So they're both at two on the game. And our depth scoring is really just coming in here and getting the job done. So, wow, what a performance yet again. Reichel, or Radish puts up the exact same stat line, two goals and an assist, and really couldn't be coming at a better time here. So, yeah, what a fabulous, fabulous performance here. Have we? I don't think we've extended Taylor Radish. I might be wrong on that, but I don't think we have. Yeah, we have not. So, how much money is he looking at? We could extend him. Honestly, the way he's played in this playoff run, I would not be against that. Um, he, has, he has been fabulous so far. The only thing is eventually we're going to have to pay Cody Blake. And Cody Blake is going to be the expensive one out of all of our players because, well, then again, Celebrini is going to be expensive too because he's 90 rated at 19 years old. So, all right. Um, I do just want to take a quick peek at our players' playoff stats here too because they have just been dominating. And it's, it's still a runaway here. Like, Celebrini's five points clear of Bedard, which I never would have expected but man oh man what a series it's been from those guys how about patty kane with 13 goals in 19 games though leading the playoffs yeah he only has 23 points it's not 33 points but it's still 13 playoff goals is crazy it's not 20 or anything or 21 or whatever the record is but as we head into this final potentially final game of the stanley cup finals in 2026 we might sim one, we might sim two periods, we'll see what happens here. So, we start off, it's a 1-1 game as Nicholas Obey-Kubel scores, and then Corey Brooks ties it up. And those were goals were within two minutes of each other, about. We get outshot 14-9, though, so that's one of the first periods we've been outshot all series long. Second period, oi, yay, yay, okay. So, I don't think we're going to be able to beat the... Um, Capitals after that second period as we just get lit up. They showed up to play. But hey, it's uh it's NHL. Anything can happen. So let's jump in and see if we can somehow score four goals on Superstar with AI learning up to three or four or whatever I got it set as. But uh this should be a fun one. I should probably turn my headphones back on. There we go. Alright, so we are ready to go here. Third period underway, and we have got a lot of ground to make up, that is for sure. Oy, 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 what a save again, Camesso. My goodness, he is just, again, standing on his head. Just making plays that you just don't really expect from him. And then, okay, Bedard. Trying to get away from his check. And Beauty Backhand just absolutely dominates Linus Olmark's all of his ratings and abilities and everything else. But Connor Bedard just willing the puck into the net there. And we're three goals down now. Alright, second, er, second period. Alright, so... Where are you going there, Obi? That's what I thought. Alright, Corey Brooks. Horrible shot. That was so bad, he could have placed that anywhere lower and it would have been fine. Would have had an actual chance at, you know, doing something. But apparently not. <laughs> Go figure, Tom Wilson's leading the playoffs in hits after he's made it to the finals. All right, third line out here. Albelin can't quite win that draw, but that is okay. Man, I am so bad at throwing hits right now. Whee, that OB one-timer just about found the net. What a pass to Carter. Jeff Carter driving to the net, and he scores. What a beauty goal. Jeff Carter just talks that one. What a goal. All right. Well, we are back to within two goals now. Five three. I told you guys anything's possible if we're if we're playing well. Like, oh my goodness, Jeff Carter just using that power forward ability to drive the net, deke around uh, John Carlson. He's got as many points as Cody Blake. Um, talk about Jeff Carter being a valuable member of this team right now. Wow. 
All right, so fourth line's out. We're gonna win the face off there. We a Strom. Yeah, um, Strom probably should have scored on that. I don't know how he didn't, but he didn't. And now Nazer looking for a pass. Oh, if that one had actually gotten through, I think Oliver Moore would have had a good chance at scoring on that. Oh, good pick off there by Moore. His pass doesn't find its intended target. All right, now Levshinov going to fire through traffic and Entwistle driving the net just couldn't quite tuck it away. Oh, okay. Carlson gives up the puck. Oh, can, can we hit a guy, please? Nice pass to Radish. Okay, what the hell was that? Big hit there by Radish. All right, Blay coming down the wall. Oh, you hit Bedard. Bro, you did not just hit your own guy. Come on. Radish into Bedard. Bedard stops up, cuts in. Great chance. Better save, though. Bedard looking for open ice. He's going to cut back in and fire through traffic. Great tip there by Radish, too. That could have... That had a real chance of going in. All right, Celebrini down to Radish. Oh, Radish just cleared it right out of the zone. That was unfortunate. Oh, what a pass back up, though. Radish into Celebrini. Great chance. Absolute chaos in front of the net. And, yeah, man, oh, man, that could have been... a. Uh, could have, could have gone the right way there, potentially. All right, here goes Cody Blake now. Cody Blake doing what he does. Oh, he just about got through everybody there. Oh, my God. What a hit there by Isaac Phillips. All right, Blake now firing through traffic. Radish, centering pass. Doesn't quite get there. Nick Michael might. If I had hit him there, he might have gotten injured. Okay, they got no energy. What am I watching here? Okay, you're not making that stick check with no energy. All right, here goes Korczynski. Looking for a pass. He's just going to drive it right out in front instead. Right, pass back to Corey Brooks. His shot gets through, but not doesn't go in. Brooks now over to Korczynski. Korczynski going to stop up. Fire. It was a great opportunity to tip there. Okay, what's his name? Um, Radish needs to get the fuck off the ice right now. Ovi tries to tuck it. Can't do it. Now here goes Jeff Carter again. Oh my god. Fuck off, whoever the fuck that is. Edmondson. Yeah, that's not happening. Nice try. Alright, here goes Elbelin. What is that? Here we go, Khrushchev is in. Phil Khrushchev scores. Let's go. We're back to 5-4. We tuck three goals in one period, and we are in a game here now. As the Capitals proceed to ch not choke, they haven't given up the lead yet, but they have given up a, a hefty load of chances here. And Khrushchev manages to tuck that one over the glove of Olmark under the stick of Joel Edmondson, and we are in a game here. Four minutes left, not a lot of time, but it's time. All right, here goes Nazar. Nazar, centering pass, doesn't quite go. Good poke check, though. And Entwistle can't quite tuck it. Fabulous opportunity there for him. Oliver Moore on a lucky bounce. Cuts in. Oh my god, how did that not go in the net? Moore plays it back. Isaac Phillips shot. Doesn't well, it got through, but doesn't really have a chance there on the rebound or anything. Alright, 
Nazar couldn't get through, unfortunately. I was really hoping he could. Now Ovi, trying to walk in, gets past like three stick checks somehow. Don't ask me how. Oh, here we go, Connor Bedard. What the hell is that, Rasmus Sandin? What was that? Like, actually, though. Never seen a play quite like that, where he just, like, is beaten. Like, Bedard was in, essentially. And then it just goes completely his way. Like, okay, get off of me, Strom. Holy fuck already. Celebrini up to Radish, back to... Oh, make a pass. Somebody. Oh my god, Bedard, you j just missed that. I don't understand how, though, either. Because there was, there was loads of opportunity for that to... Okay, I can't hit in this fucking game, man. Holy... Okay, so we lose that one. I mean, it was close. 5-4, we had four minutes to try and tie it up, and we just we couldn't get possession of the puck, essentially. And then having Taylor Radish run a four-minute shift in the third period there kind of just ate all of his energy. So then our first line just didn't have the energy they needed. So, yeah, we'll head to game six here as Washington continues to fight back. But uh, that was not the desired result. To, to be fair, that second period was so bad from our team we gave up what four goals so that was pretty much it right there but into game six now chicago looks at another attempt to try and claim the cup we uh start off 2-2 out shooting them 13 to 9 second period it is a 4-2 chicago game and i mean i'm gonna jump in and play this even though we're up by this much i i would love to see the stanley cup celebration So here we are in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., 2026, game six of the Stanley Cup Finals. And the Blackhawks lead 4-2 to against the Capitals heading into this third period. So starting things off, here goes Celebrini. Macklin Celebrini down the wall, centering pass to Connor Bedard, and a great save by Olmark. So Bedard, Celebrini, and Kane all at the top of the scoring list for the playoffs. All right, so Bedard loses the faceoff, but Celebrini almost got away with the puck there. Big hit there on Ovi by Korchinski. Love to see that. All right, and here goes Celebrini walking in. Great chance. Fabulous save. Brooks going to peel back, shoot it low, big rebound, and it kicks around there, and Celebrini just couldn't quite find it. But very smart shot there by Brooks. All right, now Washington on the breakout, trying to set Ovi up. Great defense by Celebrini, though. And here goes Connor Bedard. Bedard cuts in. What a glove save by Olmark, though. Bedard was in clean there, pretty much. All right, now Celebrini out to the back post. Couldn't quite find Radish there, but uh, there was an opportunity for sure. All right, now Reichel in to stop Kapanen. Kapanen doesn't get the shot off, but a big rebound or big centering pass and a great save there. All right, now a great centering pass to Kane. Patty Kane gets absolutely flattened on that play. Now Cody Blake going to play it deep. Back down, great shot in there from the point, but... Uh, eaten up there again by Olmark. All right, face off here for Albalin. That one doesn't go. Bovillier gets flattened on the dump in by Chris Tanov. Wow. All right, now we're going to send this one up. That was going to Kurashev, but uh, Olmark is going to get there to pick it up. Now Shillington up to Sammy Blay. Sammy Blay down the wing. Gets knocked over there yet again. Great pass there out of the corner. So Kurashev is going to crisscross with Albalin. He's going to center it back to Kurashev and a fabulous chance. Now one-timer through traffic. Rebound Carter can't score either. But man, oh man, we had our chances there. Ha, 
How is there no hook on that play? Oh, poor Bovillia. He just does not keep his head up, apparently. Yeah, he's uh, he's real slow to get up there. Oh, good pick off by Oliver Moore, who's going to come in, drive this thing to the net, and a great save. I don't know how that one stayed out. We're going to dump it in deep to Entwistle. He can't quite center it there to Nazar, or Nazar. Now Nazar turns back, looking for the centering pass. Again, bounces around, and Olmark manages to scoop it up, but... Yeah, there, there's been chances galore. Like, we could have had multiple goals in this game just in the third period, but uh, ooh, I didn't realize how... Oh, man, Oliver Moore looks like he got just folded in half there on that hit. Oh, jeez. All right, so we got our first line out against their top line. Bedard's yet again going to lose the faceoff because he's not really that great at faceoffs yet. Now Radish trying to make the play. Great stick check there. Oh, not not what we wanted. Not what we wanted. Oi, oi, oi. All right, here comes Bedard streaking down the wing. Centering pass in. Radish finds it, gets another shot off. Here goes Radish up to Korchinski, trying to find Bedard. Radish can't quite tuck it away. How do they get the puck out of that battle? Big hit there on Kapanen. Now he's nets off, just gets run over by Korchinski too. Oh, oh, bad play, bad play. Yep, the Camesso was able to find that one, fortunately. Oh, beautiful pass in, but uh, just didn't quite work out there. Now Bedard plays it around for Radish. Radish going to go back down for Bedard again. Bedard looking for a play. He'll go for another dump in. Why not? We're just cycling the puck right now. It seems to be working. So play it back to Vlasic. He's going to shoot through traffic and fire it on. Great chance, but uh, we'll go for a change here. Oh, boy. Carlson's in now. Great save, though. He gets flattened at the end of the play, and we'll go the other way. Now Reichel in, over to Blake, Cody Blake couldn't tuck it again, somehow. Man, oh man, we've had, again, like the rush chances, I mean, Carlson could have scored there too, that that could have been a close one, but uh, it wasn't a great line change on my part. I know I knew we needed to change it up, but I should have been looking to change a little bit earlier than that, so. Alright, Tanev over to Vlasic, oh my god, what a tip, I don't know how that didn't go in. Edmondson now, going to send that one up to what almost connected on the pass. Now Prostas, great defense, but uh, we also played some pretty solid D there too. Now Cody Blake looking for a play, he's going to cut back away from the check. Blake goes for the drop pass, ooh, bad play there by Vlasic, Patty Kane looking to get back. Edmondson, great chance. Better save there by Camesso. He's going to get it back out to Blake. And Blake's going to get it up to Vlasic. Oh, what a pick off. Wow, that, that's actually a really good play. Oh my goodness, Obey Kubel got just murdered there by Vlasic. Here goes Jeff Carter driving right towards the net, using that big powerful frame he's got, and that's how you got to do it sometimes. All right, so they got the goalie pulled. We'll send it up, and really, I don't think anybody more fitting than Jeff Carter could have scored right there, but uh, he won't get it. Oh, great deke by Kuznetsov. Wow, that was fabulous. There's the flip pass up. Carter's not going to miss that one this time with 15 seconds left. And the Hawks are Stanley Cup champions, man. I don't... <laughs> I don't even know how. I literally don't even know how. But in just six games, we... somehow beat the Capitals? We, we just won the lottery last year, dude. And now we're winning the Stanley Cup? Like, what? <laughs> what, a, what just happened? We just managed to go on one of the craziest playoff runs... 
I've ever seen. I think we only lost five games all playoffs. And now we got a two on one here. You know what? Might as well tuck it. Why not? Because those last 17 seconds didn't drain down fast enough. Mackenzie Entwistle gets another goal. So, <laughs> man, what? Poor, oh man. <laughs> Poor defender. I think it was Sandine. Rasmus Sandine just goes head over heels over top of Olbark. Just, you know what? I will just land square on my neck. Because that's about the equivalence of pain that it would feel to losing the Stanley Cup, I assume. Uh, but yeah, poor Capitals, man. Ovi could have had his second cup, but instead, it's going to be Connor Bedard getting his first and Patrick Kane getting his, what, third? Fourth? This is Patty Kane's fourth Stanley Cup. And, yeah, we are we are now in the conversation for um, potential dynasty material. We are, we're not dynasty material yet. we got to win a lot more to do that. But winning the President's Trophy in one year, having Celebrini lead the league, Bedard lead the league in goals, those two guys dominate in the playoffs. We don't lose more than five games in the Stanley Cup playoffs en route to, there's the con Smythe, of course, Macklin Celebrini, who else? Like, it, it was just sheer dominance this year from the Blackhawks, and I did not see it coming so quickly. So, yeah, we're we're going to be pushing for Jenny. Is that Sidney Crosby? That looked like Sidney Crosby carrying the cup, honestly. Um, but, sorry, total squirrel moment there for me. But, Captain Connor, come and lift your cup, buddy. 20 years old. Did he just, I think he might have just hit youngest Stanley Cup captaincy ever because I think Crosby was 22 when they, the Penguins won the cup correct I might be wrong on that I'm fact checking right now all right next up ah uh, Celebrini I'm sorry Celebrini was just he, he won the cons Mike he's the best player in the playoffs we'll give it to don't give it don't get me wrong we'll give it to Patty Kane after get him as number four um Youngest Stanley Cup captain is Sidney Crosby at 21 years and 10 months old. Led his team to the Stanley Cup. Um, all right. Wow. Just, just wow. Get it to Connor or uh, Patrick Cade next, though, celebrating you. Like, that was, that was something, man. And there you go. Showtime Patty Kane returns to Chicago and they win another cup. He really is the heart and soul of this team as far as championships go. I just, I don't have anything else to say apart from that. And then I have to, sorry, I know we got Chris Tanev, uh, Jeff Carter, those guys, but I have to give it to Drew Camesso just simply as far as his performances are the reason we won the cup. If he wasn't in net for us, I genuinely don't know if we would have won the cup, so... Yeah, what a fabulous year it was. Um, Connor Bedard makes Stanley Cup history, NHL history, by being the youngest captain ever to win the Cup. And man, oh man, what a year it was for the Chicago Blackhawks. And there you have it. They are Stanley Cup champions. Let me get my ugly face out of the way there. And there you guys have it. Wow. Wow. And of course, we gotta get the the cup scene here. Such a good one. I I mean, yeah. <laughs> Let's get that music intensity up. So that's all you guys can hear. Why do they put the Vegas Golden Knights names beside, but then they can't, you know, you know, they like they, they generate your entire roster onto that animation, yet they can't do it for the other teams that win the cup in the years leading up to it. Like that would be really cool if the team that won the cup the year before actually was sitting there in 2020 
425 or whatever the season was before. But fortunately, we are going to get our contract renewed as we, I mean, deservedly we should. We won the cup. Oh, man, what a year it was. So there you have it. Um, I'm not trying to save. I don't know why I was trying to save. But as we take a, a further peek into the draft class here, um, there might be a couple players we'll be able to grab. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see, I guess. But man, oh, man, what a... What a year it was for the Chicago Blackhawks. Stanley Cup victory, a just boatload of accolades come into the, the franchise as multiple players have fantastic years, win multiple awards. And it looks like there's more low elite kind of players in here than I was initially expecting. So that is good to see. Makes the draft class a little bit deeper and yeah, I think we're going to be able to get some half-decent picks out of here now that I'm looking at it a little bit further. Taro Kostitsin, or Kostinen. Uh, Varlama was not an elite player like I thought he was going to be. That is all good, though. Can't win them all. And all right, um, I think that's, yeah, like the, the scouts will do a little bit more work here as we head up to the draft, but we are going to hit the draft here, and I'm realizing I don't have my face cam on. There we go. So let me pull my headphones off real quick, and let's do player awards and stuff here. Although, we might have to advance just a couple of days because the awards don't always click right away. The Belleville Senators win the Calder Cup. And yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at these absolutely absurd accolades here. So, Blackhawks win the Stanley Cup, President's Trophy, and the Clarence Campbell. All the awards they can win, of course. And then Macklin Celebrini wins the Art Ross. Leon Dreisaitl, though. What did Dreisaitl have for points? He had 114, so really you could have argued McDavid maybe, but uh, Leon Dreisaitl is judged the most valuable player to their team. Adam Fox wins back-to-back -back Norris's. Connor Bedard gets the Lady Bing this year. Uh, Cody Blake goes and wins the Calder. Go figure. He had a pretty solid season. Macklin Celebrini is your Conn Smythe winner. Jeremy Swayman wins the Vesna. In spite of, actually, no, never mind, that's not in spite. We we never, didn't have one goalie win more than 35 wins in the regular season. Uh, Pyotr Kachetkov wins the Jennings this year. Matt Benning's going to win the Masterton. Uh, Sierra, or Washington's coach, wins the Jack Adams. Yeah, they made it to the Stanley Cup Finals, can't really argue that. Um, Elias Lindholm wins the Selkie this year. Leon Dreisaitl gets the Ted Lindsay. And Connor Bedard gets the Rocket. So there you have it. Two awards for each of your respected Chicago Blackhawks top players there in Bedard and Celebrini winning awards. And yeah, not really surprising at all. All right, guys. So as we advance to the actual NHL entry draft now, we'll get to see who wins the Gavin McKenna sweepstakes. And it's going to be the Florida Panthers. Not the team I was expecting, but there you go. Gavin McKenna will be heading to Florida. Winnipeg will manage to land um, Ryan Rubrik. So, very interesting top five there as there's really quite a bit of change. Ottawa and Philly kind of get screwed. Same with Seattle too. Um, Seattle and Arizona. So, yeah, a little bit of movement there at the top this year. And as far as retiring players go this year, we're going to see Eric Stahl, Zach Parise, Lucic, Broussard, Simmons and quite a few others call it quits. Uh, the best goalie this year is Carey Price, um, but a very solid retiree class as Varlamov and Halak also call it quits. But yeah, those guys were also all-time goalies. They're very good. And then that's your defenseman list, so not really quite as decorated and established, but still some very good NHL defensemen in there. A couple thousand gamers. Um, and Myers, Martinez, and Goligoski, but yeah, very, very good retiree class this year. All right, so as we get ready to head into the draft here, we just got to, you know, upgrade our trade block, do a couple things like that. Um, yeah, this, this team is looking ready to win for a long time. <laughs> that is the only way, only words I really have to describe what we're looking at right now in Chicago. Chicago is a beast to be reckoned with. And... If I'm being completely honest with you guys, I don't think too many teams really want to deal with Chicago right now because because of how the last couple of years have just played out and how many drafts we've won and traded up for and done things like that. Like we 
we have absolutely gamed the system to the max, essentially, is how things have gone for Chicago over the past few years. We've got some fabulous young defensemen coming up the system that are all looking ready. There we go. Korchinski finally got his X-Factors. That took that took a quite a while. Um, but yeah, we've got a great looking group of guys here that are going to be hopefully here to stay for the long term and to gain some further long term success with this team because yeah, things have just looked so good so far. So without further ado, let's get to the NHL entry draft and see what we can do. All right, guys. So as we get into this draft, um, we'll see how the picks and everything plays out. I don't think we really need to make we, we might make one trade. The only trade I could see us doing is maybe trying to grab some picks towards the end of, like, the third round kind of area. Like, right now we've got pick number 93 there. I could see us potentially grabbing, like, 92 and 96 from Toronto just to pick up a couple extra assets. But, like, let, let's see what it would cost us to actually do that. If that's not too expensive, I could totally see us doing that. And Toronto probably wants to trade those picks. Maybe not. Oh, okay, they actually don't want to trade those picks. Um, that might make things a little more tricky. They want Adam Jekko or Sawyer straight up. I would prefer to keep... I think Jekko is quite a bit better overall-wise. Um... Mitchell Sawyer's not bad either. Um, he actually just had a monster year in the USHL. Uh, what do we want to do here? You know what? Yeah, we can we can do this for for Mitchell Sawyer. Well, Sawyer's yeah, 67 rated at 20. Jacko's 70 rated at 20. Is he not? He is. Yeah. So I mean, it's left winger versus right winger. Really, essentially, is all we're trading out there. Bigger power forward for a or a bigger sniper over a slightly smaller power forward um i think that'll be fine i really don't see us needing that many wingers so yeah let's uh let's do that send that trade through why not and you guys will understand in just a minute why i've made that trade because i'm lining up my picks here and we're just like one or two picks short of where i want to be for this draft so Let's simulate ahead here, and Gavin McKenna is going to be the first overall pick. Go figure. Um, he's going to be an absolute beast in Florida. Uh, this was a bit of a down year for him. He had 138 points last year in Medicine Hat, but this year was just not quite as good. Ryan Rubrick's going to go to the Jets, and yeah, he looks he looks fabulous too. So keep an eye on him. Um, Yakupov's going to go to Ottawa, not really surprising. The Flyers will get Max Trigg, who's going to be a very nice defenseman for their team. And then Seattle will get Yuri Gogolov. So yeah, exactly how the top five was supposed to play out. All right, so now that we have all our picks ready to go and that top five is done, let's simulate over to pick number 32, and we're going to see uh, Salonen goes off the board um, as a center grinder. And Markstrom is a very good player there too. Same with who else? Who else is good? Um, some decent top four, top six elite player there in Tulmas Tuominen, great name. And then Timothy Blacker as well. Um, so yeah, two elite players there. And then yeah, Vagiholahi. That's I, I love that name. That's such a fun name to say, Vagiholahi. Um, so. This is where I'm a little bit stuck just as far as, like, I, I would love to pick this two-year ETA, Kari Kurvinen. He looks great, but I'm just not sure with pick 30, because we got pick 32 here, and then we got pick 39, which we got from the Calgary Flames last year. Um, but I just, I think we need to draft towards team needs, which would be depth forwards now more than anything. Um, and I think by drafting depth forwards, we're going to put ourselves in a better spot to win. Um, the only other guy I was kind of keeping an eye on here was this Preston guy too. I know he's top nine, but he's a two-year ETA, so he could be a potentially very good fit for this team too. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to skip over Kerbinen. We're going to take Ulf Zibanejad as the low elite grinder with a four-year ETA, and he will indeed be low elite, but how good is he at four years? 61 rated. Okay. Not quite where I wanted to be, but that's okay. Um, and then, 
Kervinen will go to the Coyotes too. They get two very good defensemen in this draft. They also managed to snag that Johan Eklund guy, maybe distant cousin to William Eklund. And perfect, perfect, Matthias, or Matisse Preston is going to indeed be available there for us. Um, so yeah, let's take him. Why not? And he's, okay, he's 67 rated. And again, medium top nine. We're drafting for depth, though. That is kind of the main goal here right now. So yeah, as we head over to pick 42, again, you guys will see a, a, another pick here that I've planned. But you're going to look at me and go, what the hell is he doing? Trust me. Just trust me, okay? Yes, we're skipping over an elite goalie here in Sergei Korobov and a bunch of other elite goalies there in Schofield and a few others. But reason being, there's a two-year ETA fringe starter goalie here. So meaning we can take him, toss him into the AHL with um, either Lars Backer or Emil Vinny. He can get some playtime down there, and then he comes up as the backup goalie for the future as a fringe starter, meaning we're not going to have to pay two elite goalies anywhere between three to eight million each. And then Lou Tanaby is just a backup option that probably becomes a mainstay AHL guy, but also could be really good. So that's why we're taking him here. I know it's a bit early with pick 42, but. As we head further in the draft, it's not really going to make much of a difference. We're not missing out on a whole lot of talent apart from other teams that could use the elite goalies better than us. Like, we just, we we are already saturated with elite goalies. So, for the next pick here, um, I'm not going to take Blaine. I just don't trust that potential enough. Instead, we're going to take Alexei Solovyov. So, make it up to you guys with a high elite goaltender instead. And this guy looks like a freaking monster. 6'5", 220 pounds at just 20 years old. Yes, he is a little bit on the older side, but he's also 57 rated. And, uh, yeah. 954 save percentage in the one game that he... Or the four games that he played. That's crazy. So, that is Alexei Slavyov. Keep an eye on him. He's going to be really good. And, alright, we simulate over to pick number 64 now. With pick number 64, who did I have here? We're going off the board again, because why not? That's pretty much all we're going to do here. So we could take Dave Holden. He is 20. Um, Four-year ETA, I believe. Yeah, four-year ETA. Um, or we could take Koisinen, also medium top six. He's 19, though. Or we could take Tommy Piespinen, who could potentially turn out to be really good with only one-year extra ETA, and he's only 18 instead of 19 or 20. So let's take Tommy Piespinen, and he is a low elite. Perfect. How good of a low elite is he, though? He's 56 rated. Okay, so nothing special there, but another grinder. We potentially just filled out our entire bottom line with two grinders and a sniper. That would really be something um, if that does eventually um, formulate into our line and, and our lineup. But looking through the rest of this, you know, there's a starter there in Donahue. He looks pretty good. I guess we could have taken him. I mean, we also could have taken... Um, Toby Smith's in here as a 74 rated backup, but 74 rated doesn't necessarily mean you're a good player. So I like fringe starters a little more for my backup goalies in the future. Obviously, Drew Camesso is going to be in there too for being a really good player, but uh, what do we got? Pick 92. So we've got a couple picks back to back here. We're going to go with Miko Niskala. No guarantee that he's elite, but he is indeed nice. 49 rated offensive defenseman. He's got good size already to at 6 foot 392 pounds. So yeah, great pick there. And then we're going to go a little bit further down here and we are going to snag Jody Perry for your ETA at 19. Uh, a little bit better than Sadikov. And again, we don't need a ton of defense. And Jody Perry will indeed be a 64 rated, low elite. I wrote him in as a right D by accident instead of a right winger. But uh, yeah, Jody Perry looks very good there. Again, good size at 6'2", 196, and 19 years old. And then over just a few picks here, we could have picked up Jamie Alessiak in that trade, but I just didn't really want to do that. Instead, what I want to do is I want to skip over Sadikov here because I just don't don't really think Sadik we, we have a need for Sadikov. The player I do think we have a need for here is a little bit further down, a little bit further off the board, but is this guy, Howard Ortiz. Yes, I know he's 20. Yes, I know he's an enforcer, and enforcers just don't really do a lot, but 
we don't want Connor Bedard to get injured. And I really do think a six foot six, 240 pound enforcer defenseman is gonna be the answer to that. So we will take Howard Ortiz at pick number 96. And how good is he? Obviously he's low elite, but he is a 55 rated enforcer. So hopefully he could make the show at some point. That would be really fun to see because he is just going to be an animal. Um, his fighting skills are gonna be off the charts. His strength is going to be 99, probably, because he's 6'6", 240. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's keep an eye on him for the near future, and then we'll simulate all the way over to pick number 192, and spam back through like four rounds worth of draft here. So, uh, looks like Hansel was okay. Rad Radislav Hansel, great name there. Uh, as far as the fifth round goes, nothing too crazy yet. We keep on going. Okay, low top four in Licht. Um, Norbert, great name. <laughs> and then fourth round, anybody? Oh yeah, top four, Sadikov, obviously. We knew he was going to be there. And anybody else? Toms, yeah, Tyler Toms is okay. And all right, that was, that was a pretty sad um, fourth round, honestly. I hope the third round's a little bit better, but then again, we've snagged a lot of the talent that was available here. Holden goes, what, what was that, pick number 78? Okay, not bad. See, I didn't really review too much of this third round. We just picked later on and got Niscala, Perry, and then Ortiz, all one, two, three, within a couple picks. So, for our last pick of the draft, um, let's go with, uh, do we want to go with the Obergauer? Probably. Unless, is there anybody else? Uh... I have a better feeling that Haglund's actually going to be the better defenseman of the two. Plus, Haglund's 18, Obergauer's 19. I just have this feeling, I'm not certain, but I have this feeling that Haglund's actually going to be low elite versus Obergauer's not. So, let's take Haglund. And, okay, he's low six, so not really a horrible sixth round pick, honestly. You never know. Sometimes these guys have the opportunity to turn out, but offensive defenseman, yeah, yeah we'll see. we'll see what happens with him. So guys, as I was just going over the rest of our like draft sheets and stuff here, I was reviewing and we've actually only traded away like one or two prospects so far. I think I think Sawyer's actually one of the first ones we've traded away, which I mean at 67 rated to 20, you know, there is some potential there. He could potentially make the show after another two years probably, but that's assuming everything goes well in the uh, AHL. And there's no guarantee that does, but, you know, give Toronto a prospect, see if they ruin him or actually turn him into, like, a Matthew Nyes or somebody like that. Then again, you could argue Toronto didn't really make Matthew Nyes what he is because he went through the NCAA route. But regardless, not not to discredit Toronto on their, their um, prospect generation and growth and everything and how, how they develop players, but it's it's, like, top talent only, really, there, if you look at it, so... Okay, um, as we finish off this seventh round, we don't have the last pick of the draft because we traded it away to somebody. I can't remember who. Probably the Florida Panthers. That's not right. Okay, I, I don't remember trading that pick away, but we did. And yeah, um, horrible seventh round. Like, horrible. There was not a single good pick in there. So I'm kind of glad we didn't really have a pick to deal with there. But we'll send the last pick. Florida managed to say a seventh round defenseman or seventh defenseman in the seventh round. But there's your draft. We get uh, a pretty interesting mix of prospects. Honestly, just a lot of low elite guys that just maybe have the potential to make the league, but probably won't. And then, you know, Solovyov is going to be amazing, probably, eventually. He's a high elite goalie with that kind of size, like I can only see things going well for him. If not, like if he doesn't start to develop properly the way we're expecting him to over the next season or two, then we trade him away, he's high elite, so he's gonna have decent value. And then as far as Preston and Zvinijad go, hopefully they turn into fourth liners for this team eventually. So that was the draft. And really, I think that's where we're gonna wrap this episode up because the recording's gone on long enough. And uh, yeah, it was a very successful episode today. So if you guys enjoyed this episode and are looking forward to the off season to see how the team grows and shapes up and changes a little bit here and there, then make sure to drop a like, subscribe, hit notifications, and of course, leave comments down below 
as far as if there's any pending free agents you might like to see us sign. I don't think we're going to have the cap space or ability to sign Connor McDavid. I don't think he is going to leave Edmonton necessarily, but who knows, right? Like, I think Patty Kane coming back would be a very realistic option. I think maybe Erasmus Anderson could be an option too, but I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below as far as who we should be pursuing, who should, who we should just leave alone or maybe look to re-sign for our current players and things like that, because that's really what's going to drive this upcoming episode. And it should be a fun one, but as far as our contracts actually go, we got Patty Kane, we got Taylor Radish to re-sign. Jeff Carter's not going to be $18 million, which will be nice, so we might have McDavid money there if he ever does hit free agency. I don't know if he will, but they paid Dreisaitl $12.9 million for the next eight years, probably. Yeah, next eight years, so they're not going to have cap space. We could potentially force a trade in Edmonton um, if they want to keep McDavid. I think that would be a pretty wise option for them, but like what? what would you go for? There's, there's really not a lot you could go for. And they got to re-sign Skinner. They got to re-sign. Like, they they cannot afford to re-sign McDavid right now because Darnell Nurse is such a heap load of money. So, yeah, um, that could be an option. We could bring the Connors together and have Connor squared. I don't think that would be very realistic. I think we just let McDavid walk to whatever market he wants to walk to. I mean, if he's interested in Chicago, then sure, but really, I, I just, I don't know. I don't know if that would be realistic or fun necessarily to do. So, yeah, again, let me know in the comments below. We're not going to go too overboard with anything. We're just going to let this team build and grow and turn into a dynasty eventually because we've won a cup in our third season. So, that is it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next one.